Hi everybody, this is Debbie with Total-German-Shepherd.com and today I want to talk to you just a couple of minutes about uh, one aspect of owning a German Shepherd. This is a health issue we want to talk about today and we're going to talk about canine distemper. Now you might ask me first of all, what is canine distemper? Well did you know that canine distemper is highly contagious? It's true. Now the canine distemper virus is highly contagious and it's also transmitted through the air as well as through various bodily secretions between dogs. Now most often canine distemper is spread as dogs breathe or cough on each other or through discharges from their eyes or their nose as well as uh, in different kinds of bodily secretions from infected animals. Now if your dog comes in contact with urine or fecal matter of an infected dog it can also result in your dog becoming infected. Now the canine distemper virus also affects many other wild animals such as hyenas, minks, weasels, raccoons and a lot of other large zoo cats. Now the distemper virus is very similar to that of the human measles virus. Uh, it's also a respiratory disease in dogs and some people may even refer to it as the hard pad disease. Now most often uh, pets that die from uh, canine distemper are usually older dogs or dogs, excuse me, or puppies that are very very young that have weak or even undeveloped um, immune systems. And the distemper virus suppresses the dog's ability uh, for their immune system to fight fight off infection and disease and also the distemper virus will actually multiply throughout the dog's system as it spreads throughout its body. Many dogs that are infected with distemper may not even become seriously ill but it's also true that of the dogs that do become ill about half of them will die. So don't be fooled. Uh, canine distemper is really really contagious. So let's talk about some of the risks that are associated with canine distemper. So distemper is very very serious and it can easily spread you know quickly uh, through a kennel, through a neighborhood, you know from dog to dog in your home or whatever and of these dogs that receive or you know that are infected with the distemper disease, a significant number of these dogs may die. So all dogs, all dogs and puppies are susceptible uh, to this disease. However, the very young and the very old have the highest death rate, which may be even up to 75 percent. So even if a dog doesn't doesn't die from this disease, its health may be permanently impaired for the rest of its life. So dogs that recover from distemper may have a lot of permanent health problems such as problems with their vision, their nervous system, behavioral changes, they may have seizures, um, they might have ambulatory problems, and often puppies are going to have problems with the enamel on their teeth. So what are the symptoms of canine distemper? Well canine distemper has a lot of different possible symptoms and uh, they're all very varied and a lot of these mimic other diseases so it's just better to make sure if your puppy or your dog's sick take it to the veterinarian to have it diagnosed immediately just to make sure that you know it's not distemper. Now the most common signs of distemper are things like nasal and eye discharge, diarrhea, vomiting, uh, high fever, coughing, depression, lack of appetite, seizures, um, the dogs may be listless, so there's just a lot of different uh, signs that they may possibly have or symptoms they may possibly have if they have distemper. Now mildly affected dogs may only cough and they might not be you know quite quite as bad as some dogs are and may often they'll be you know they'll often be misdiagnosed as a result of this. So it's not uncommon for an infected dog also to have only a few of those symptoms we just talked about instead of all of them as, as they are listed just previously. So be aware however that there is a latent period um, between the time that virus actually enters your dog's body until clinical symptoms of this disease actually appear. Usually it's just around 10 to 14 days. So the virus can easily be spread for several weeks you know while your dog actually has it and also after the virus has, has you know after the illness has been taken care of and, and they've gotten over it. So what is the best way to treat and also to prevent canine distemper? Now prevention is by far uh, the best way to to deal with canine distemper. Proper vaccination of puppies and dogs is just absolutely just a necessity. Typically it's best to begin vaccination for these diseases around six weeks of age and to continue until the puppies at least around 12 to 16 weeks of age. And then you're giving the vaccine at three to four week intervals between these times. So please don't let this happen to your dog. Now right now there's no one specific treatment for distemper. Um, some of the surviving dogs do develop immunities to protect them from distemper 
you know, the rest of their lives. However, this is not always the case, especially for young puppies. Now, therapy for distemper is largely supportive, consisting of intravenous fluids, anti-seizure medications, other kinds of medications, and it can also be very, very expensive. So the safety, excuse me, the safest protection of all by far is just the prevention through vaccinations. Excellent vaccines have been developed to help prevent canine distemper, and all of these have very minimal side effects. So let me reemphasize: uh, older dogs oftentimes don't develop a lifelong immunity to distemper, and for that reason, they should also be given vaccinations as needed throughout their lifetime. So if you'd like more information about any kind of health issues, training issues, if you want to come watch some videos, read some articles, we just have loads of information on the German Shepherd. Uh, we have books there available as well to the, you know, for people to, to come by and check out. There's just lots of information all about nothing but the German Shepherd. And again, our website is www.total-german-shepherd.com. I hope this information about canine distemper has helped you a little bit. And if you got questions, you know, watch it again. And as always, if you have any questions, questions, contact your veterinarian for more information. Y'all have a good weekend and thanks a lot.